shallow shallow oh in the shallow 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 hey so the golden globes just happened and once again i was not nominated for a leading role on the brad motto youtube channel it's fine really it's fine i just worked my butt off on this channel and i just i wanted a nomination and it didn't come this year and it's okay next year <laughs> I can do it. I'm gonna do it next year. So I tuned into the red carpet pre-show to see all the beauty, the glamour, the fashion. I didn't see a lot of it. However, I did see this. He stole my look. It's okay though. He can rock it. And this, Timothy, little old Timmy, Timmy boy. I see that harness you're wearing and I do want to tug on it. And then there was this. We can't forget this. This is definitely a moment. I mean, and this, oof. And this, I don't know, I'm missing a reference on this one. And this, she delicious. And this. <laughs> and then we had this moment. This, this one, this one, this one, this one. And I was sitting there watching my TV like, Ooh! Yes, Gaga! Yes, Gaga! Yes, Gaga! And then I kept watching my TV, and I kept staring at that TV, and I got closer to it, and closer to it, and then I zoomed in, and I zoomed in more, and then I saw this. No, Gaga! No, Gaga! No, Gaga! So I don't know how it happened so quickly, but it went from yes, Gaga, to no, Gaga! Very quickly, and I wasn't okay with it. I wanted my moment, and I didn't get it. Alright, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me keep the shadiness back for a second, let me just... Keep it inside, tie it up, make sure it doesn't come up. My shade is not coming out yet. Mm, I don't think it's gonna come out at all. Okay, it already came out. Let's be serious. I wanna first say something before this video continues and I talk about Lady Gaga's hair at the Golden Globes. I do not think that Lady Gaga's hairstylist is bad. I do not think that he's incapable of doing hair. I think that he is a wonderful stylist. I'm sure that he's great. And hair is art and art is subjective. We all see art differently. In this video, I'm simply giving you my opinion on the look. This is not the right opinion. This is not the wrong opinion. This is just my personal opinion. As a hairstylist, I definitely know that you never know the circumstances behind a look. Some of these stars give you a half an hour to do a look, okay? When you need three hours. Some of these stars, they're moving around, they're texting, they're moving their head like this, they're getting their makeup done, they're getting their nails done at the same time. They're... You don't know what happened behind the scenes. But I always like to give a lot of credit to these celebrity hairdressers because it is not an easy job. But the last thing I want this video to do is bash Lady Gaga's hairdresser. Please do not leave any hateful comments. If you are gonna leave any hateful comments about the look or about the hairstylist, don't. But you can leave constructive criticism below. I've seen a lot of looks that Lady Gaga gets by him and they're all awesome. Now with that said, I just wanna share my personal opinion about Lady Gaga's look at the Golden Globes. Let's do it. Let's recap on this look. All right, so here's the look. It's sort of a periwinkle blue. I know that the look was also inspired by Judy Garland in A Star Is Born from 1954. And I understand the concept of the hair completely. I think. So the look she has here is sort of a modern take on a classic chignon except higher up and I personally think looks better from the back of her head than it did translate on the front. I feel like the front was a little flat and kind of looked like kind of thrown up quick. Then you see all the detail on the back and it kind of makes more sense to me. When I saw only the front I was kind of like What's going on? Because I don't really see anything but a but a lump on the top of her head and like two strands of hair hanging down in the front. Uh, also, it's Lady Gaga, so we're always trying to do like a little bit of shock value, which I think that's what they're going for with the periwinkle blue. That didn't quite work out. I think this is the main thing that I had an issue with. The blue, I don't know if this was the stylist who did this. I don't know if it was Lady Gaga who was maybe getting her hands into a little bit too much purple shampoo that day, or her hair was just overtoned when they bleached it. Or they sprayed some kind of temporary hair color in her hair to make it blue that night and kind of didn't distribute it evenly on her head. Because if you don't spray at an even distance all around the head, you're gonna get spots that are darker and spots that are lighter. Looking at this picture, I just don't see how he could have 
messed up that bad with like a spray hair color. I mean, anybody looking at this can see that it's not covering every strand of her hair and it needs to be like coated over again. Or maybe this was just an artistic choice and maybe Lady Gaga loved it. I mean, clearly she walked the carpet with it. So I don't think she'd leave her house if she didn't like it. And hey, more power to them. So I just found this article on ET after I recorded this video. It says, Aspirus used the blonde life lightener to create this brilliant blonde and then mix the brand's semi-permanent color intensity in sky and rose to create the cerulean blue. So apparently he just did a double process and then toned her hair with Joico toner sky and rose. I don't know how the rose goes with blue. Now I realize that it's toner and her hair is really porous and a lot of her hair is yellow and a lot of her hair is really white porous so it just took on the really porous parts of her hair and not on the yellow parts of her hair. That is why it's so spotty and colored like that. Now we know. Back to the video. She looked beautiful no matter what. I just think that the hair was not quite on Point. Hate me, love me, whatever, that's my opinion, sorry. So I considered remaking her entire look on a mannequin head and doing it how I would have done it, but then I was like, first of all, I'm not trying to compete here. I'm not trying to say that I'm a better hairstylist. I think every hairstylist has their own techniques and has their own point of view. So I don't want to sit here and pretend I'm better than this guy doing Lee Gaga's hair, because clearly I'm not at his level. I'm not doing Gaga's hair. I thought that I would take the dress she's wearing, the overall aesthetic of Gaga and create a hair look that I would have loved to see her in in place of this hair look that her hairstylist did for her. So I'm gonna show you guys a really, really simple way for you to also achieve this look at home. It's gonna be a very classic Judy Garland inspired hair look that would go perfectly with Gaga's dress and Gaga's look that night. And I'm gonna show you guys a little technique on how to color your hair at home, not permanently, to get that beautiful periwinkle blue that I think that they were aiming for. And then you can decide which look you liked better. So let me get my mannequin head, the creepy old mannequin head. Love you, girl. Come over here, grab my supplies, and let's start. If you want to follow at home, please do. I would love to show you guys how to do a classic, gorgeous old Hollywood wave Marcel curling iron set. They're so fun to do and they're so easy and they come out beautiful and it's just a classic look that will never die. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's do it. All right, I got Bay here. We're ready to do some hair. So if you're gonna do this at home, all you're gonna need is some hairspray. Any kind of hairspray will work really. Whatever you have, all Gucci. A round brush, really of any size, not that important. Anything like small or medium will work. Any kind of blow dryer, a one and a quarter inch Marcel curling iron or a regular curling iron will do. I wouldn't go any any bigger than this size, one and a quarter for a curling iron if you're trying to do this look, because it will not work out for you. And I prepped her hair with just a little bit of a oil. This is Elixir Ultime by Kerastase. Just gives you a little more added shine and moisture in your ends. Here's an inspiration picture of Judy Garland. It's kind of what we're going for here. But we're gonna do a halo section, which I mentioned in a video before. That just starts like about an inch and a half back and it goes all the way around her hair like a halo. That is a halo, one and a half inches all the way around the head like that. Basically, all we're doing is blow drying round brush style and setting it with a Marcel curling iron and then pinning it in place. And I'll show you right now. Oh, I don't think I mentioned that you'll need some pins, you can either do ones like this. These are really helpful because they don't put a crease on the hair or you can take these little like. So for this first section, we're blow drying this way and towards the face. It's all gonna go towards her face, okay? Usually modern times, we blow dry away from the face to open the face up, but this time we're trying to blow towards the face because we wanna brush it out later and make those really nice, sexy Hollywood waves. You'll see what I'm talking about later. All right, let's blow dry this out. If you ever find like your brush gets stuck a lot going down the hair, that's because you need to get these ends really nice and shiny and soft first and then work your way up. All right, now while the hair is still hot and setting in place, we can quickly take our curling iron. This doesn't need to be at high heat. I have my curling iron set at 300 and just do a simple curl towards the face very old school sort of banana curl situation. Let that sit for a second, get it nice and hot, let that drop out. Boom, it looks crazy right now, but it's gonna look very pretty later. We're gonna quickly ravel that up, okay, pin. And there you go, that is the first curl, and you're gonna continue to do that all the way around the head the exact same way. Let's do it. 
Another thing that's gonna cut down your time a lot when blow drying your hair is to really get that moisture out of your hair before you really start to style blow dry. Rough dry the crap out of it until it's like 80% dry. Unless you have really curly hair, don't do that, okay? Work from wet to dry. But if your hair is relatively straight or wavy, you can definitely get 80 to 90% of that moisture out before you start to do stuff like this. And again, you guys, it's so important to focus on these ends first and make sure they're nice and shiny and perfect. All right. All right, now that we have all of that done all around, that is all finished. We have everything going forward towards your face. Now we are gonna start with the top and everything is gonna go backwards. So the same thing, just backwards. Great, let's do it. <laughs> and this is the sectioning. I'm just, okay, to just rows going down. And I'm just explaining kind of the easy way of doing it. This isn't exactly how I would do it on a client, but I want you guys to be able to do it at home. And otherwise, if I was gonna explain the real way, the cop could way of doing it, not a lot of you guys would be able to follow along. So I am doing this more as a beginner, but it'll still have a really nice finish. Because in the salon, I would do a bricklay pattern back here. That way all the curls don't get stuck together in the back, but it should be fine. If you know what a bricklay pattern is, you can do that. You can look it up, you can Google it, you can do it at home if you know how to do it. Cool. Alrighty, the blow dry is finally complete. We have the entire head set and ready to go. And if you guys want a more detailed description on how I did this, there'll be a video link below. It's called how to do perfect hairstylist blowout or something like that that I made a few months ago. And it explains pretty much this without the curling iron. So if you wanna learn how to do a really nice blow dry, just watch that video. But now that we have this base, now we get to do the fun part. I'm so excited for this part. Oh! So you're gonna wanna Spray with hairspray. Just take your head off like this and just spray her. You know, because everybody can just take their head off. Wouldn't that be so helpful? And actually hair, it takes 20 minutes to cool down properly. So I'm gonna give this a little time to cool down and I'll be back to brush it out and show you guys how to get that perfect Judy Garland inspired 1950s hairstyle. Okay, now that it's properly cooled down, we're gonna take a flat boar bristle brush like this or you can just use a comb or whatever brush you have. Let's take the bobby pins out from around the halo section. Ooh, look at those bouncy curls are so pretty. I love this part so much. We're gonna take our brush and just work with the hair, not against it. I'm gonna take this section up here, do a little back combing and then tease it and then hairspray. All right, just like that. This, this is the most important piece of all. This really gives you that old Hollywood feel. We're gonna take a clip and just clip this into place for now. You can also do a little teasing to bring out those waves a bit more. You see that definition that I gave that? I'm just really working on getting this into a nice S formation. And that is the front. That's how it's gonna stay. And we're gonna take down this other side. This side's a lot easier because we're just kind of pushing it back away from our face. We're gonna take it all down now. Remove all these clips from your hair. Just get your hands in there and break up all of those curls. And just working with the hair, I'm gonna pin this section back because I feel like that's something Julie Garland would do. I don't know that much about her, but it seems like something she would do. Just like that. Most of the time they didn't have too much volume up here, so I am just parting it kind of all the way back. Alrighty, so I just hairsprayed it and now we're gonna take these pins out very gently. And here is the finished Judy Garland inspired, possibly how Lady Gaga should have worn her hair to the Golden Globes look. <laughs> 
I hope you guys like it, but like I said, we're gonna give her a little periwinkle blue moment, just like Lady Gaga had it. We're gonna take this Teal Breeze by Hush Prism. It's a temporary hair color spray that washes out with shampoo. So you're gonna shake it up. And I like to take a white piece of paper or any kind of piece of paper or anything just to block the face from getting blue all over it because that would not be cute for the red carpet. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna spray it from like 10 or 12 inches away. And there you go, that is the blue added to her hair. And listen, if she was going to the Golden Globes, I would spend another hour doing that blue. I kinda just went over it really quickly, but I think it looks pretty nice. And to be honest with you, it's not very easy doing this spray color. It's never that perfect or even, except I just think it could have been a little bit better on Gaga. Doesn't need to be perfect, but there was spots missing, you know? This is how I would have loved to see Gaga on the red carpet this year with that gorgeous blue gown, my Judy Garland inspired look, and the Gaga inspired look. Here it is. A mix between the new and the old. I'm digging it. It's really cute and fun and fresh. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's a lot of information and I hope you learned a thing or two about how to style your hair at home and rock this gorgeous 1950s Judy Garland inspired, Lady Gaga inspired hair look. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already. Don't forget to live your extra life and I will see you all next time. Peace.